very much. Uh, the former Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders is warning Donald Trump not to turn the people's anger against minorities. The senator from Vermont is joining us now live for his first TV interview since the election. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. So a key reason why Donald Trump won was his anti-trade message that appealed to a lot of voters in states like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, very similar to your own message that, uh, that you used throughout your campaign against Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nomination. If you had been his competitor, and that's a big if, if you had been his competitor, Senator, do you think you could have beaten him? I, I don't think it uh, makes a whole lot of sense uh, to do Monday morning quarterbacking right now. Uh, the election is over. Uh, Donald Trump uh, won. Uh, between you and me, Wolf, I would have loved to have the, had the opportunity to run against them, uh, but that did not end up being the case. Right now, where we are is where we are. Uh, I intend to work with uh, President uh, Trump on those issues where he will, in fact, uh, work for the middle class and working families of this country. I will vigorously oppose him uh, if he appeals to racism or, or sexism or, or some of the other discriminatory measures that he brought up during his campaign. But it never crossed your mind that you might have done better against him? You might have actually won if you had been the Democratic nominee? What good does it do now? <laughs> You know, the election is over and, uh, you know, Hillary, I did my best uh, to see that Hillary Clinton get elected. I was out in uh, some 12 states during the last week with, eight, uh, I think, 21 rallies. Uh, so the election is over and we've got to look to the future. And what we have got to demand, I think, is that Mr. Trump keep the promises that he made to working families. You'll remember, Wolf, he talked about how he was going to be a champion of working families. Well, I hope he will raise the minimum wage so that people who are working for nine or ten bucks an hour get the kind of raise they're entitled to. I hope he will do pay equity for women. Women should not be getting 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. I hope he'll rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, and I look forward to working with him if he chooses to do that and create millions of decent paying jobs. And on trade, absolutely we need a new trade policy. I will work with him to get corporate America to start investing in this country, not just in China uh, and in Mexico. Uh, I hope, you know, he told the American people, Wolf, uh, that uh, he didn't have to pay any taxes. He is a multi-billionaire. He doesn't have to pay a nickel in federal taxes because he knows how corrupt the tax system is. Well, if he knows how well that, how corrupt that system is, I hope very much that he'll work with progressives to create a tax system which, in fact, ask billionaires and multinational corporations to stop paying their fair share of taxes. Senator, did you personally advise Hillary Clinton to spend more time talking about those issues specifically to working class white voters in states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, issues that you championed? Well, I think it's no secret that our campaign uh, had an impact, a significant impact on the Democratic platform. No secret that Secretary Clinton supported the Democratic platform, which I think is a document that, if adopted, will transform this country. So I think, yes, Secretary Clinton, I think, understood the need to talk about raising the minimum wage to a living wage, to make sure that public colleges and universities in this country are tuition-free, at least for the middle class, to make sure that we do not pass the Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership. Uh, so I think, you know, in, in that sense, uh, I think Secretary Clinton did listen to what not just I had to say, but many other progressives. Have you spoken with her since Tuesday night? I have not. I owe her a call and I will make that call, but I have not. Uh, but I think really now right, uh, what we have got. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Wolf. No, no, no. Finish your thought, please. You know, what we have got to be doing now is focusing on the realities of where we are. Donald Trump won the election. He didn't get a majority of the uh, popular vote, but he did win uh, the electoral vote. He will become the next president. And our job is twofold. Our job is to make sure that the anger that so many people in this country feel, because they are in fact working longer hours for low wages, they're worried about their kids. If they're in rural America, they're seeing their downtown stores boarded up, their kids are leaving town because there are no jobs in that community. Inner cities, youth unemployment, astronomically high. 
People are angry. They have a right to be angry. But we have got to channel that anger against the people who caused the decline of the middle class and so many people living in poverty. Not take it out on our neighbors who may happen to be Muslim or Latino or women. That is demagoguery, and I will do everything that I can to oppose that. Let's deal with the real issues, that the rich are getting richer, that we are moving toward an oligarchic form of society where a handful of billionaires control the economy as a result of Citizens United, control to a significant degree our political system, and may I say, control our media. So there's a lot of work to be done, but let's not take out our frustration against the poor or minorities. Senator, I'm curious, what was your reaction Tuesday night as you watched the results come in and she started losing in Florida, North Carolina, Virginia? You were watching, I'm sure you were watching TV. Were you surprised? Watching CNN, as a matter of fact, Wolf. Uh, Thank you. I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought as we went into the day that there was a two-to-one chance uh, that Hillary Clinton would win. So I thought there was a real possibility that Trump could win. I thought that the likelihood was uh, that Hillary Clinton would win. Uh, and I was sad for two reasons. Uh, obviously, I worry very much about some of the very discriminatory and inflammatory uh, things that Trump said during the campaign. This is America, and we are not going to throw out 11 million people in this country who are undocumented. We're not going to turn against one of the largest religions in the world people who are Muslim. I do not want to see Muslim kids, and we're hearing about this already, who feel intimidated in the country and frightened in living in the country where they grew up. That is not America. We do not want to continue the attacks against women that were so prominent uh, in, in Trump's uh, campaign. But I hope that on those areas where Trump talked about the needs, where he was right, the middle class, working class of this country is hurting. Let's work together to improve lives for millions of people who are now living in despair and who have the right to do a lot better than they are today. And I'm sure you're, you're happy, like you, he opposes the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and uh, that apparently is not going to go anywhere under a President Trump. And, Senator, you, you made a big issue out of that as well. You also tweeted uh, a stark warning, though, to Trump today, and I'll put it up on the screen. You tweeted, if Donald Trump takes people's anger and turns it against Muslims, Hispanics, African Americans, and women, we will be his worst nightmare. So tell us what you mean by that. If a President Trump were to enact, for example, a ban on Muslims, a temporary ban, or mass deportations, what will you do about it? You're in the minority in the U.S. Senate. The overwhelming majority of the American people, including people who voted for Trump, do not agree with those types of policies. And our job is to bring the people together, to organize, to put pressure on the administration, and on the Congress not to go through with those policies which are so, so un-American. Here is the simple truth. The people, so many people in our country, Wolf, are angry because you know why? They're, they've seen their jobs go to China. Their kids can't afford to go to college. They can't afford child care. They can't afford, if they're living in a city, often can't afford the high cost of rent. They're angry. And they're seeing almost all new income and wealth in this country going to the top 1%. Rich are getting richer. Everybody else is getting poorer. That is the reality. But what it would be unacceptable for a president to do is take that anger, that frustration, that hurt, and turn it against the poor, turn it against people of color, uh, turn it against Muslims. That is demagoguery of the worst kind. And if Trump attempts to do that, I will do everything that I can, along with millions of other people in this country, to say, sorry, that is not what the United States of America is about. So what's your advice? Because uh, you disagree with Donald Trump on a lot of these kinds of issues. What's your specific advice, Senator, to Democrats as they deal with Republicans in Congress? Uh, should they obstruct uh, all this, this kind of potential legislation? What, what advice do you have for them? This is what I believe. You know, Trump talked about his concerns about outsourcing, his concerns about a bad trade policy. If he is serious about reforming our trade policies and creating jobs in America and not in China, let us work with him. 
Uh, Trump talked about a corrupt campaign finance system. He's a billionaire. He was able to fund a large part of his campaign. Well, you know what? Not every candidate is a billionaire. If Trump is serious about understanding that we have a corrupt campaign finance system where special interests are able to buy politicians, I would hope that Trump will work with us to overturn this disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision and move toward a campaign process by which big money and wealthy camp contributors cannot control the political process. If Trump is serious about his concerns about the needs of working people, let's rebuild the infrastructure. He's talked about that. I've talked about it. We can create millions of jobs rebuilding our roads and our bridges and our water systems, airports, our rail system. If he was not just into campaign rhetoric, and if he was sincere about it, let's work together. So there are a lot of areas I think we can work together if he was sincere in what he said during the campaign. But if he is going to resort to bigotry, trying to divide us up, we will oppose him uh, tooth and nail. What is your message to the, the protesters? A lot of young people that we saw in the streets, for example, last night who are very unhappy with the results. What do you say to those, those, those young people? And so many of them, as you know, supported your campaign. I would say to them, number one, do not despair. Get involved in the political process. The views that we hold, that we should be a vibrant democracy and not move to an oligarchy, the views that we should have a non-discriminatory society, the views that we have got to tackle climate change and transform our energy system, that we need to make our public colleges and universities tuition free. We have to deal with this grotesque level of income and wealth inequality. All of those issues are what a majority of the American people support. So I would urge those young people, get involved politically. Run for school board, run for state legislature. And by the way, a lot of people have done that. We've got some really good victories as part of an offshoot of what our campaign was about. And so I would say to the young people, get involved, help us oppose Trump uh, when he is wrong, and let's work together to create the kind of nation that most of us know we can uh, become. Interestingly, uh, Senator, you haven't, you have not ruled out the possibility of a 2020 run for the White House. Is that something you'd seriously consider? Uh, well, the last thing in the world after this never-ending campaign when we have not even sworn in the new president is to talk about 2020. So let's, let's not go there at all. Uh, right now, what I've got to focus on is doing everything I can as a United States senator uh, to improve life for a middle class which is hurting today and to protect the interest of 43 million people who are living in poverty. That sounds to me, and I, you're going to be mad at me for pressing you, Senator, but that's my job. It sounds to me like you're not ruling it out. Well, I would say there will be a whole lot of disappointment in this country if the media starts talking about 2020. We are, you know, the people are tired of never-ending campaigns. Let us focus on the reality of today. Let's focus on the issues impacting the American people, and let's not worry about who's going to be running in 2080 or something like that. All right. Uh, uh, one final question. Uh, I know you got to run. Yeah. Uh, pre the president, President Obama, he's right behind me over there in the White House. Uh, he's going to be president until January 20th. Would it be a good idea? Do you believe it would be a good idea for President Obama to pardon Hillary Clinton? To pardon Hillary Clinton? Uh, you know, Hillary Clinton. In other not words, not, not you know, allow her, not, not allow her to be ch charged with any potential crimes, because you know there are those in the uh, incoming Trump administration who want a special prosecutor to go ahead and, and file charges against her. The president, and remember, there was I, a president I, I, when say, Gerald Ford. Uh, we're we're old say. enough to remember when Gerald Ford pardoned Nixon. Yeah. Do you think it would be a good yeah, idea Nixon, for for this president to pardon Hillary Clinton? All right. I don't look. The president will. President Obama will do what he he, he feels is best. But the idea uh, in a democracy in the United States of America that a winning candidate would try to imprison the losing candidate—that's what that's what dictatorships are about. That's what authoritarian countries are about. You do not imprison 
somebody you ran against because you have differences of opinion. That would be an outrage beyond belief. And I think the vast majority of the American people would find that totally, totally unacceptable to even think about those things. Senator Sanders, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much.